Hey y'all in for H and H here with the Kenwood TS 890S. I want to show you something having to do with filters. Those of you who have an ICOM, you're accustomed to this with your twin pass band tuning. You can set up three different filter configurations. You can do that with the Kenwood as well. There's a menu selection where you can actually trim it down and only have two, but the default is three. So I'm going to show you, let me move over here a little bit with the camera. I want to show you this button right here, IFFIL, okay? Now look up here at the passband display and you'll, you'll notice, let me zoom in. You'll notice that I'm currently using a 2700 wide filter. Now, the default roofing filter, remember this is a hybrid rig, so the default roofing filter is a 2.7K. So I'm basically digitally matching the filter. If I want to go more narrow, I could. I could even go wider. Now, I'm there I'm saying, well, digitally I want to go wider than the physical filter. Well, I mean, while the physical filter isn't a brick wall going much wider, you're not going to notice that much difference. But that's okay because I don't want to be too wide. I want more selectivity, right? I, I want to block interference from up and down the band. So I've got this set at 2700 digitally so it matches the roofing filter. But let's say there's some interference and I want to squash that a little bit. So I'm going to leave this trained on the passband display, but I'm pressing that button I showed you a minute ago, the IF, FIL, IF filter, and I'm gonna tap it. And you'll notice now that even though I'm still using the 2.7K roofing filter, I've now digitally moved to 2100 Hertz. Now, listen to his audio. It's gonna thin out a little bit. But the idea here is not fidelity. The idea here is I've got some interference from up or down the band and I want to narrow. Cheers, Ralph. 73 is my friend. That's not bad. Uh, but uh, uh, now let's say it's extreme interference and they're only two kilohertz yeah. away. I press it again and now I'm digitally going down to 1500 even though the roofing filter is allowing 2.7K through. It's doing the heavy lifting. Then digitally I'm going to narrow even more. Now he's going to sound more tinny because you'll see that the filter width on the left side, which is low frequencies, I've pulled it in, pulled it up, if you will, away from roughly 100 hertz, which is the bottom end. Human hearing stops at 20 hertz, but I have it, you know, set usually where it's going to be a right, of, right at 100 hertz on that left side. All right, now I'm gonna press it again, the IFFIL, and I'm back, I start over. See, filter A, look in the top left of that passband window. Filter A, so filter A is my normal rag chew setting. Let's let you listen to him. So, so filter A is like a rag chew setting, normal. Got a little interference, or hey, here's another example. What if you got somebody you're talking to and they don't know how to adjust their microphone very well and they're just so boomy, so much low end? Then I'll set, now, by the way, how do you set those? You just, width, I'm up, I'm at the top right adjusting the width knob. Now I went into the menu and I made a change. Rather than that being a high cut and a low cut, it's just a width which is the way Yesu does it. And then that way the knob that would have been high cut is now a shift. So I see I can shift. I find that a much better way to do this. Out of the box, there's a separate adjustment for the low cut and the high cut. All right, but anyway, if you make a change, it just remembers it. So I'm changing B to 2200. So if I hit IFFIL, there's C at 1500, back to A at 2700, and now back to B, which I left at 2200. I'm gonna put it back at 2100, it'll remember that. And I'll tell you why. I had a, a Yaesu FT920 that I outfitted with NRAD filters. Okay, so I pulled out the filters that came in the rig and I put in international radio filters, which were very clean, sharp, nice filters. 
and I bought a little kit from them where I could have my original Yaesu filter, which was a 2.8, you know, 2800 hertz. In this kit, there was a little switch you could mount to an existing screw on the bottom of the radio and toggle to a 2100 hertz, which I chose. And I really got accustomed to listening at 2100 hertz. So that's kind of a, a bit of a favorite of mine is a compromise between fidelity and selectivity. So the IFFIL button is toggling between filters A, B, and C. And see, here we are back to my default RAGCHU filter. Let me go into the menu. Okay, you just tap the orange menu button. Where is that, Doug? Well, right there. So I tap that orange menu button. I go into the menu. And I will... That, by the way, when you do that, it enables the multi-knob. See the orange there? That light lit up. So now I can use the multi-knob to go up and down in this list, or I can use these arrows. You just use the function key. That You don't touch the screen. It's function keys. That way they can change all this on the screen according to what you're needing to do. You just press buttons next to it, which is really clever. They could have done that with touch screen as well, but you're not putting fingerprints all over your screen. I like that. I do like that, that you're not putting uh, greasy fingerprints on your screen. Now, you'll see here, menu number six. Let me scroll up so you can read. TXRX filters and miscellaneous. See that? I'm going to press the F4 key, which is select. F4. And then I'll, I'll, I'll use the knob to scroll down. There's your TX filters, 200 to 2800. That means that's you're holding your your lowest frequency for your transmit voice is 200. Your highest frequency for your transmit voice is 2800. See there, there is where you can set the number of IF filters you want. The default is three, but you can have two if you want. If you just don't want to have three, if you just want to toggle between two, I like three. Okay, so I'm going to press this and lock that back in. And shift and width. See this right here? I'm going to go into select. And this is where you can decide what you want your knobs in the top right to be. So I'll, I'll put it back to the factory default for a moment and show you how that works. So it's now going to be high and low cut. I'll escape out of here. Now, let's, let's focus on that pass band display again. I'm rotating the knob, upper right knob, okay? The upper right knob, which is now going to be the high cut, see? So I'm only affecting the high side. Let me let you hear that. More high hiss, less high hiss. But I'm not doing anything to the low end. Now I'll adjust the ring on the outside. Let me let me show you for a moment what I'm talking about. I'm adjusting this knob for the highs, and that we call the ring. That's going to be the lows. Okay. So let me get back on that passband display. So see now I'm taking away from the low frequencies. I just think that's a little too much work. You could argue, though, you could say, well, but Doug, I actually sometimes want to get rid of the hiss because it bothers me, but I don't want to get rid of the low frequency. Then this default method is the way you want to go. But let me show you what I do. Um, low frequency. Okay, so let me go back into the menu. All right, and we're back into the filters miscellaneous here. I'm going to select, and I'm going to change this back to... To, uh, where it's a shift and width knob pair instead of high and low. All right, and because essentially, by the way, <laughs> if it's going to do the high cut, low cut, your shift is depending upon where, where you low cut and where you high cut. It's just a lot of, that's a lot to do. So I'm going to leave it on this, which I'm more accustomed to. So the way Yesu does it, I like that. ICOM does the twin passband tuning, which works yet again different, and I find that that one is even more work to set up. Okay, but at least you can set up three and cycle between the three like you can with the Kenwood. Well, the Kenwood is kind of a blend of what Yesu does and what ICOM does. I can do three 
as you saw, I can store three, which you can do with an ICOM, but I can also set it to where I'm working with, uh, to, to me, I find this simpler, let me show you. So now I just rotate that outer dial and I just narrow both sides at the same time and then I can shift with the, with the knob. That is just, to me, that just makes so much more sense. So let me explain something. If you narrow way down, I tell you what, let me put A back on its default and I'll use my IFFIL and I'll go down to 1500. So let's say I go to 1500. I got, I got a high pitch interference coming from somebody who's up the band a little bit. So I then rotate my shift and that emphasizes the low frequencies and de-emphasizes the high frequencies. You see right here? That way, I just put some depth back into his voice. Also got rid of some high-pitched interference. So there's a lot you can do here. I just find this is quicker, simpler to make that a shift knob. Now you can see where it's, you want, if I'm gonna center up, I want it to be on shift 1500. That's centered up. Now, of course, I took away highs, took away lows, but by shifting back over here, I'm adding back some of the highs, right? Now, let me go back to my default filter A back to 2.7K. So it's matching the filter, 2,700 hertz of audio uh, band, bandwidth, which is about right for ham radio listening. Again, why would I switch the other two? Got interference. Oh, that didn't take care of it. Switch to the other. And again, you can adjust these and it'll remember how they were last set. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. This is N4HNH and my channel is about operating techniques. I do work with different radios. I even sometimes do a tutorial series. Many of you found my channel through my FTDX10 series, but I also have one for the FT. DX101D or MP. And then I have one for the FT710 AESS or field. So this series here is about the Kenwood TS890S, Kenwood TS890S. These videos are made possible because of a team who provide private funding through donations each month or each year to help me do this and be candid with you. I don't have any backing from a manufacturer, so I don't have to hide anything. I can show you the flaws. I can show you the good, the bad, and the ugly, thanks to this team of supporters. They support my channel and my work through patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And the ones who support me on a yearly basis and beyond that, in other words, even multiple years, I call them long haulers. And I want to acknowledge five of those long haulers right now who helped bring this video to you, plus over 700 others at this point. All right. Hey, 73 from N4 H&H. &H.